Hello, Internet land. It's me, Emily. So um, today I wanted to talk about Section 4 of the Consultant Agreement. Um, this is the one I have in my blog that says this is the one you want to pay attention to. There is a good reason that you want to pay attention to this. So I figured today I would read it and kind of go over my personal opinion of it. Uh, again, this is all my opinion. So, Section 4, Consultant Relationship with Paparazzi. 4.1, Independent Contractor Status. When consultant joins Paparazzi, they are an independent consultant or an independent contractor. They do not purchase a franchise or a business opportunity. Okay, so um, when someone comes to you and says they have an exciting business opportunity, it says right in the consultant agreement they are not purchasing a business opportunity. And the agreement between the independent consultant and paparazzi does not create an employer-employee relationship, partnership, or joint venture. So it's not a business opportunity and you're not an employee. As a result, the independent consultant is solely responsible for paying all state and federal taxes owed in form of any compensation earned in the form of retail profits retained at the sale of products or the bonus commission plan offered by paparazzi. Paparazzi will not withhold any FICA taxes of any kind from any commission or bonuses paid out. Independent consultants are in complete control of the means by which they operate their paparazzi business. This is the part I put in bold. They will establish th their own goals, hours, parties, shows, and methods of sale within compliance with this agreement and applicable law. They are solely responsible for paying all expenses incurred in the development of their business. Okay, they're contradicting themselves because they're not purchasing a franchise or a business opportunity, but they keep referring to an independent consultant as owning a business. All right. And it's you know, the success of the paparazzi business is the sole responsibility of the independent consultant. Oh my god. Okay. This is going to be a long video. I can tell this already because I'm going to go off on a few soapboxes. I can already tell. Okay. Section 4.2. Income taxes as an independent contractor or independent consultant will receive an IRS form 1099 non-compensation employee statement earnings, kind of like what you get from a casino when you win a jackpot, uh, if they have earned over $600 paid out from paparazzi in the previous calendar year. If you have a downline and bling babes under you, you will get a check. So they call their underlings hashtag bling babes in the consultant agreement. I didn't add that. That's in the consultant agreement. Otherwise, you will never see a dime from corporate. If you do not recruit, you do not see the loot. It says that in the consultant agreement. Holy fuck. Okay, independent consultant is solely responsible for paying local, state, and federal taxes. A company of all IRS forms and generated as a result of the above remitted are sent to the IRS for that applicable year. If at any point the federal tax information in the form of your EIN or SSN provided to your uh, paparazzi through your independent consultant contract, they may hold all future earnings until the error is rectified with the paparazzi records and correction and remitted to the IRS. In these circumstances, pending the severity of the error, the consultant may be subject to and liable for any fines incurred by excessive errors submitted to the IRS. So they, they don't help you with any of the uh, tax parts like most companies do. Uh, they leave that up to you. And if you're a complete novice and you don't know what the hell you're doing, it, it can be kind of dangerous. All right. Section 4.3, reporting errors. If at any time an independent consultant feels that there is an error made by paparazzi in regards to data display, volume accumulation, commission calculation, order delivery, trade placements of consultants, or any other error, and I love how it says tree placement of consultants, you know, because recruiting is what this is all about, right? 
Um, the, con the consultant has 30 days to notify paparazzi in writing or when the purported error or incident occurred. Failure to do so will waive paparazzi's liability to correct and rectify and make any adjustments for the issue in question. So if you don't send them something in writing, and it has to be in writing, not email, not a phone call to corporate, you have to do so in writing. And by that, you would want to send it certified mail with a return receipt requested so you know that they got it, so you have something to cover your butt in the case that they don't respond or rectify it. You have proof that you sent it to their corporate office in writing and someone signed for it. So it's somewhere floating around that corporate office and they failed to address it. You know, that's, that's the only, you have to cover your ass with these companies, you guys. All right, so section 4.4, limitations of liability. By signing or agreeing to the independent consultant agreement or any components thereof, well, they don't give you an option to agree to one part and not to another. You have to sign saying you agree, you agree to all of it. If you don't agree to all of it, you, you can't become an independent consultant. So any component thereof is so misleading. The consultant agrees to release, discharge, and hold harmless paparazzi and anyone directly affiliated with paparazzi, employees, officers, etc., from any loss or damages, including costs and fees incurred or suffered by you as a result. So by signing this independent consultant agreement, when those consultants went to the convention that was held by paparazzi, um, and it was directly affiliated with the employees and officers of the company where they uh, were unable to get a refund on their tickets, so they were there go therefore forced to go to convention. Ergo, they caught COVID because they didn't enforce the masking policy. They didn't take extra precautions during a hot uh, city hot spot of COVID. They didn't do temperature checks. They didn't enforce the masks. And there are pictures all over the internet showing that they didn't care. So, according to Section 4.4 of the Paparazzi Consultant Agreement, you're holding them harmless. Harmless for any loss or damages, including costs and fees, incurred or suffered by you as a result. Loss. Life was lost. And because of this consultant agreement, you can't hold paparazzi corporate responsible for the loss of life that they were directly responsible in causing. That is royally fucked up. Okay? Royally. All right. So, Section A, independent consultants breach of the agreement, including these policies, uh, B, the improper promotion or operation of a paparazzi opportunity, business, or related activities. C, any incorrect, or incorrect data information provided by the consultant to paparazzi. D, any incorrect data or display of information displayed by the virtual back office. The consultant's failure to provide any information to paparazzi that may be necessary for paparazzi to operate its business. Or F, the consultant's failure to execute their personal business strategy. So the blog I read a, a couple weeks ago about, um, you know, how you have to spend an hour setting up your business. Think of a name. You can change it later. Read these blog posts, watch these videos, get trained, start setting up your business strategy. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. All right. Let's go to section 4.5. Okay. For all you consultants who have been unceremoniously canceled because you're watching my videos, Tracy and Geraldine's videos, commenting on the recovering paparazzi group and they cancel you and you didn't have time to go to your back office and download all your reports and things that you would need for tax time, they have this generous offer in section 4.5 of the consultant agreement. Request for records. A consultant's request for physical copies of invoices, application, downline reports, or other records will require a review and approval by the compliance department and you will be subject to a $1 charge per page, as well as any applicable shipping charges. 
Oh my god. Okay. All right. Section 4.6, roll-up of downline organization. When a vacancy occurs in a downline organization due to voluntary termination of a paparazzi business, all consultants or positions shift up one level in order to fill that vacancy within the organization of the commission tree. Commission tree. This process and the removal of the terminated position is at the sole discretion and approval of the company and it may take up to three months to review. Roll-up of downline organization may not be approved in circumstances where there is any manipulation in the roll-up or termination process. There is a significant rank advancement or commission increase that will occur in result in, in, as a result of such roll-up. In circumstances where roll-up of the downline organization is not approved, the vacant position will still be terminated and will remain empty until the company the company deems necessary. You have no control over any of this. And if you're drinking the Kool-Aid and thinking that you do have any sort of control, you don't. The company will deem what is necessary and they will roll up or take down whoever they decide uh, based on what side of the bed Misty Kirby got on up on that day. You know, if, if you're not liked, you're not liked. If she doesn't like you, if she sees your videos, or if she sees your comments, <coughs> you're cut. Okay, so when an account is terminated involuntary by the company for any reason, and the original position had generated total commission earnings in excess of $50, the position will not be removed and the organization for proceeding downline will not be rolled up. This is due to the potential consequences as detailed above in such moves. The position will remain there but deemed inactive. As a result the of the compression of the paparazzi compensation plan, it is anticipated that this activity will not negatively affect the commission payout through the unveil. And uni, sorry, let me read that word again, fiber brain. Uni level program. However, it will keep the organization leg structure intact and minimize pon potential manipulation within the organization. They are really worried about that, aren't they? Manipulation and commissions and how it will negatively affect you. But don't talk about how it negatively affects you, otherwise you'll be cut. All right, 4.7. Sale, transfer, or assignment of paparazzi business or position, all your proper... Although your paparazzi business is privately owned and independently operated. Let's go back to section 4.1. 4.1. They do not purchase a franchise or business opportunity. Now let's go back down to 4.7. It's a private business. Pick a lane, paparazzi. That's all I'm saying. The sale or transfer of the assignment is subject to certain limitations in corporate approval. If you wish to sell your paparazzi business or position within the organizational structure, you must receive written authorization from the company, and the company first has the right to purchase the position in order to sell, transfer, or assign your paparazzi business. The following criteria must be met. Again, you didn't purchase a business opportunity, and if you build a successful business and you no longer want to do it, you are not able to sell that successful business to somebody that wants to take it on and continue on with it. If it was a true, legit small business that you started, you could do with whatever you wanted to do with it. And you wouldn't have to get the franchise uh, approval or the company approval. If this was truly your small business, you could do whatever you wanted with it. You wouldn't have to, A, the line of sponsorship must always be maintained and the business must continue on. B, the organization must be protected and an agreement must be signed from the departing consultant that it will be protected for the next 24 months after the transaction resulting in no contact recruiting or cross-recruiting. Two years. You can't do anything for two years. Otherwise, you're in violation of this consultant agreement. C. The departing consultant agrees not to enroll as a paparazzi consultant for a, for a period of no less than 12 months or as a consultant or distributor of any other network marketing or direct sales company for a period of no less than six months. 
The purchasing agent must not currently be or have been a consultant for the previous 12 months. He or she must be new to paparazzi. F, the purchasing agent must enroll through the transaction as a new consultant, signing the agreement, and the new account shall be created. No history is transferable. Sorry, the sun is just all over the place today. Hopefully this helps with my, because it got dark. Okay. No history is transferable. The only uh, position and location in the tree is. So uh, history, not transferable. Position and location in the tree can be. And yes, I'm having a fibro day, and that's why I look like this. Okay, H, before the sale is finalized, it must be brought to paparazzi's attention for approval. All participa participants must have been in good standing for the previous 12 months. Then paparazzi will take a $250 transfer fee that must be paid prior to the approved transfer being processed. So uh, you have to wait for them to approve the transfer before they process it. And then you have to give them $250. You have to give paparazzi an additional $250. Okay, paparazzi reserves the right to deny and transfer or sell any organization at its sole discretion. Request additional information or documentation upon a re approval or denial. Paparazzi will give further directions or timelines associated with the decision. 4.8. Separation of a business in circumstances where joint owners or partners of a single position or a paparazzi business is no a uh, business no longer wishes to continue with the business relationship due to separation or divorce. You know, because they love you to retire your husband or go into business with your your best friend. Okay. It's raining outside, you wouldn't know it though. Okay. If such action is not possible, then paparazzi will involuntary or involuntarily terminate the consultant agreement and the position and the account or business entity will be terminated. All right. During any business separation or divorce proceedings, following options are available in which paparazzi will, they will support this. One party, with the consent of the other, continues to operate the business pursuant to the agreement. All claimants on the position will deal directly with the party selected, and paparazzi will deal and respond to the selected account operator. The parties may continue to operate the account as joint owners and partners. In the event the parties cannot come to or resolve the dispute, paparazzi will terminate the consultant agreement and ex execute its rights to terminate the position and take control of the account. 4.9 Transfer upon death of a consultant to effect a transfer upon the death of a consultant, the claimant will need to provide the following. A copy of the death certificate, notarized letter or legal instrument establishing the rightful successor, and completion of a new consultant agreement. Nothing about the death of the consultants they killed, they murdered. Indemnification. A consultant is fully responsible for his or her verbal, written actions or statements made regarding paparazzi products and the paparazzi marketing and compensation opportunity that are not expressly contained with the official paparazzi materials. Consultants agree to have to indemnify paparazzi and the paparazzi directors, offers and agents and employees and hold them harmless. Again, holding harmless. From any liability, including judgments, civil penalties, refunds, attorney fees, court costs, or lost business incurred by paparazzi as a result of the consultant's unauthorized representations or actions. This provision shall survive the termination of the agreement. Hmm, interesting. So what about all those ladies that have been making those recruiting videos and sharing their why? Just curious. Claims consultants may not make any claims in relation to the product or income generated by paparazzi. 
4.12. Consultants support and responsibilities to retail customers. The paparazzi support team provides services for enrolled and or enrolling paparazzi independent consultants. Paparazzi support also offers services to retail customers of paparazzi who make online purchases through the official paparazzi website. Consultants are responsible for providing support and services to their customers who purchase directly from them. 4.13 Paparazzi's right to data. Paparazzi reserves the right to store and acquire data from a consultant. They almost they also maintain rights to own, share, or display such data, excluding secure data, within reasonable means to increase the business of the consultant or the offering of paparazzi. This right includes sharing con contact information, general location information, success information, or any other reasonable data through appropriate mediums such as the paparazzi website, replicated sites, web-based communication, letters, telephone, or other accepted mediums of communication. Okay, so when I had my Shopify store, um, I always told people to, to shop directly from my store instead of my paparazzi replicated site. Why did I do this? One, I offered better prices on shipping, I shipped a lot faster, and the money went directly into my bank account and it didn't sit there for paparazzi to deem if I was worthy enough to receive my commission from them. Um, I had several months where I had $27 in commissions. I had one month where I had $60 in commission from my replicated site. Never saw that money. Never. They kept it. So, you know, they also wanted all of us me included, to go into our back office and add the contact information for all our customers. And I didn't do that. I refused to do that. I wasn't going to put my personal shopper's information on a paparazzi website for paparazzi to have that information so they could deem to do what they wanted to do with it at their discretion, i.e. recruit new consultants with it. All right, 4.14, disparaging remarks consultants may not use disparaging remarks in, re in relation to paparazzi corporate staff, employees, directors, officer, or any other representative of paparazzi, including but not limited to other independent consultants. Consultants are to conduct their business with positivity in a manner that uplifts everyone. Comments made by consultants that may be negative in nature and relate to others potentially damaging their own business and the business of others and the paparazzi brand. Consultants should be courteous, polite, and always seek amicable, re amicable resolution to any disagreement or dispute. So what about uh, Trent Kirby's TikTok videos where he says if you're lazy and taking a day of rest? Uh, Trent Kirby, do you have fibromyalgia? Multiple sclerosis? Uh, are you going through cancer? Any of those things? Um, a lot of the people that are paparazzi consultants are women who deal with chronic illness and they stay home. And sometimes they need a day of rest because they spent the day before doing a lot of housework and the next day they can barely move. I'm speaking from experience here. That didn't make me lazy and it didn't make me worthless. But the fact that you call... Uh, Former consultants Mama June and other disparaging remarks. How are you still an active consultant, Trent Kirby? How? Oh, that's right, because you're the founder's brother and you can do no wrong. Am I right? So you can sit and tear others down, but everyone else is supposed to speak positively and uplift everyone, but you can go and be a cyberbully? Owners of social media sites, forums, and blogs and community pages are responsible to ensure that all messaging and content by contributors to those pages remain positive, uplifting, and supportive of the paparazzi business, operates consultants, and programs. Okay, I have not been a paparazzi consultant for well over a year. Okay, I quit in 2020. It has been more than 12 months, and I'm going to speak out. I'm not shutting up, and I'm sick and tired of seeing all the abuse coming from other paparazzi consultants, leaving nasty comments on my blog, which get deleted because I don't need to have them bully me on my own blog. It's my voice, and I can de determine who leaves a comment like that or not. Um, let's see. Yeah, this, ugh. All right, last section of section four. 
Paparazzi code of conduct. Paparazzi consultants are expected to present themselves in a manner that is representative of the clean and uplifting culture of paparazzi. Clean and uplifting culture. Where have I heard that before? Hmm. I think it was in church when I was a kid. We had to be clean and uplifting. However, we were controlled and clicky and cultish in a way, but we always had to be clean and uplifting and modest. Modest was another word. This includes, but is not limited to, language. <laughs> I've dropped the F-bombs on several of these videos and I don't care. Uh, dress. Uh, you can't tell me how to dress. I'm an independent consultant. Ergo, independent, I can dress how I want. And I've gone through and looked at some of your independent consultants, and a lot of them are not dressed to be fashion models. A lot of them look like me on my bad days. Not a judging thing. It's just a lot of your consultants look like me on my worst day. Like today. Appearance. Appearance. So I'm guessing that you don't want your consultants to have ear gauges, tattoos, uh, lip piercings, nose piercings, uh, stuff to that effect because it's not clean and uplifting enough for paparazzi and conduct. That's what I think about conduct, okay, paparazzi? Paparazzi reserves the right to exclude any consultant for any, for any event or violation of this code. So in short, don't act like a homeless person and don't use the word fuck. Mormons don't like that word. I got slapped in the face by my mom for using that word. Well, I don't really care. So that is uh, section four of the paparazzi consultant agreement. Uh, kind of disgusting how it starts out saying it's not a business opportunity. You're not getting a business opportunity and yet after the first paragraph, they keep referencing it as a business opportunity. It's like, no, no, no. No, it's not. It's not a business opportunity. Um, if it truly was a business opportunity, uh, you would not be uh, so controlling and telling your, your uh, consultants what they can and cannot do with their lives. So, yeah, it's, it's not really a business opportunity. It's more like a a cringy, controlling mind cult. All right, so today's new releases, not a lot out there. They have a cracked stone piece called Trendworthy, kind of ugly. There's a lot of ugly stuff hitting, and it's tacky. And what's really interesting is it's not selling Things are not selling in the back office. I mean, the men's jewelry that they have in the back office right now is, like, awful. And it's not very pleasing to the eye. They have a new uh, pearl piece that's long, but it... The picture, the, it's not even symmetrical in the picture of the model. I mean, it's like to the side. It's called Revolving Refinement and has a bracelet that matches. Um, but even the picture doesn't look good. And another thing I noticed with another piece is prismatically polished in purple. So the picture of just the necklace itself, it shows the gemstone a lot longer, but then when you look at the picture of the model, it's a different, it's a different stone altogether. It doesn't even match. So it's like so what does the necklace actually look like? Because it does not match. And then they have the long necklace in brass called Half Moon Child. It's very similar to that ugly brass piece that looked like shutters with fringe on the bottom that everybody got in their box and never sold. Um, if you're watching this video and you're a former consultant, I'm pretty sure, sure you know which necklace I'm talking about. It was awful. Lots of big, big blingy beads. I mean, big, blingy, colorful beads. And then they have this um, gold thing with, like, the crystally beads. It's called Powerhouse Perfection, and it's in gold. And then Indigenously Urban. 
the names of some of these are just bad. And then tie theory, it's a guy's necklace. Not very pleasing. Oh, but now we have lighted up. Another inspirational piece. This says, let your light shine on a little silver desk. And you can buy those for 28 cents piece at Niha Jewelry Wholesaler from China with matching little rhinestone earrings. Yay! And then we've got Goddess Getaway in pink. And then more awful rings. All About the Benjamins ring is still there, but now we have a new Paparazzi Gold Men's ring called Leading Man. And it has a fakey little rhinestone with a gold band. Oh, the trending treasures is back in the back office. These are the acrylic painted with rhinestones in the middle rings. Here comes the fireworks in gold. This was a 4th of July piece a couple years ago. Now it's back in the back office. I guess they're doing stars for Christmas, so they're releasing it again. More cracked stone rings that are just tacky and just that's the word I'm thinking of. They're just tacky. Luminary Luster, the big wide banded ring. Even the picture doesn't show off the ring that well. But uh, yeah, the uh, Tasteful Tassel still there. The Mind Oval Matter earrings, which I think are kind of cute. They're still in the back office. Jaw Dropping Jellies Iridescence. They're still in the back office. Nobody wants those, apparently. Oh, the the hoops with the embroidery thread around them still there. Social sphere. Oh my god, these are so ugly. <laughs> okay, these are like, I guess they're supposed to be silver thread or something, but it looks like a roll of toilet paper in a hoop with a, like a spool of thread that you put in your ear. It literally does look like a, a roll of toilet paper hanging from a hoop. So we have a lot of poopy themed jewelry, like those wooden beads hanging from a fish hook. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I just, I, I go to the back office just to see what the horrible is. The same now we have six barrettes that aren't moving from the back office. I'm guessing the new consultants don't know that those barrettes are what started paparazzi. Just frustrating and infuriating. Really, it is. Venetian Valentine? No. People in Venice, Italy don't wear things like that. They get genuine stuff. The seer stone's still there. Luck. Lucky Locomotion. Okay. Yeah. The ugly Wonder Woman bracelet's still there. Now we have a brown bracelet with orange flowers embroidered on. Seriously. I would not spend $275 for this stuff, and I definitely wouldn't spend $5 for some of this stuff. And those are my opinions on the jewelry as of late. I mean, a lot of the new releases aren't really new. And a lot of the stuff that they have out is still nasty and awful. And you know what's funny is um, the Fashion Fix sets. I don't know if they've gone up for sale yet. Um, if you're able to purchase them yet. Oh, you can. So the Fashion Fix sets, um, none of them for October sold out. None of them. That's really kind of telling that they've had such a large mass exodus that even Fashion Fix aren't selling out. September has sold out finally, or they just took them down, but the tab is still there. But October Fashion Fix has not sold out at all. And then if you now go by just like the earrings and you go down, you can see some of the older new releases that didn't sell out. They're now under the earrings tab. But again, a lot of these are doubles up and repeats. So I think I'm going to go over another section of the consultant agreement. But section four is the one that you really should pay attention to because that's the one that's getting a lot of people canceled lately. And uh, paparazzi's cutting off noses to spite their face. And 
you can honestly see a lot of the active consultants uh, worrying about their commission checks because they're going out there and selling like, like, you know, the apocalypse is upon us. And just my thoughts on that. So thanks for joining me today. Have a wonderful day. And uh, tea time is today. So if you uh, watch it, get your popcorn ready. It starts in three minutes. Bye.